Bay Area Discs, 2016 Youth Ultimate Coaching Conference. Well, thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm Chena, and if I'm not loud enough, please somebody from the back, like, give me a little holler, okay? <clears throat> I'll try my best. <laughs> um, so the first thing that I want to start with um, is to give you a little bit of an introduction about me, um, a personal introduction, and then an introduction on my values, how that <coughs> sort of comes into play in terms of the All-Star Ultimate Tour. Uh, so first of all, I'm the youngest of five siblings. I grew up playing disc sports, not just ultimate. Um, and I've also grown up in a multitude of different countries and different cultures. So the United States, Italy, France, China, and Jordan. Um, so this plays into some of my uh, experiences with sports very specifically in the sense that when I was growing up in, in France, I was the only uh, girl on the town soccer team. Um, and then when I was living in Amman, Jordan, I was catcalled on the streets. And so some of these experiences that I've, I've had have shaped the way uh, that, I, that I view women in sports, but also have hardened my belief in sports as being a great vehicle for social change um, and a positive thing for women. Um, to give you a little bit of background on my values and how this shaped the creation of the All-Star Ultimate Tour, um, growing up, I've, I've worked as a part of a team, a team of five. I'm the youngest of five siblings. Um, and as an example, growing up, my parents, we didn't, uh, parents didn't have us each have our own room. We had a kid's room. We we're always together, working together. Um, this has sort of bled into uh, our, our careers. We founded an Ultimate Frisbee apparel company, um, and then most recently uh, purchased the... Um, AUDL men's professional team, the Seattle Cascades, um, and then uh, most recently for me, working on the All-Star Ultimate Tour. Because I had a support system and because I'm part of a team, I'm able to explore different things that I'm passionate about and still have a support system to make that happen. Um, and so without, without that team, I would not be able to do the All-Star Ultimate Tour. So more specifically, one of my brothers, Zalen, is very good at um, big picture thinking. So I used a lot of his help for design work, branding, and how to maximize the, the mission of the tour. My brother Exton, who's actually right here today, is a great problem solver uh, and was our operations manager while we were on tour. Um, my third brother, Vero, uh, was great at helping me figure out insurance coverage and how to manage bookkeeping. <laughs> and then my sister, Rory, um, was a big help in developing the mission of the All-Star Ultimate Tour um, and expanding the way I viewed team partnerships. Um, so I, I do want to give a little bit of background in terms of the All-Star Ultimate Tour for those that <clears throat> um, don't know much about it. Um, it was a two-week long cross-country trip where I took 15 or 16 of the best college-aged female athletes put them in two vans um, and played showcase games in the major cities. So uh, we were in Seattle, Vancouver, Portland, Denver, Atlanta, Philadelphia, uh, Washington, D.C., New York, and Boston. Um, and um, but this, this idea to, to do this project, uh, for me, started in the summer of 2014. So that was between my junior and my senior year of college. Um, and I began planning it more so in my, the spring semester of my senior year of college <clears throat> uh, when I, you know, I decided to take a little bit of a uh, lighter class load and focus a little bit on, on expanding this idea, developing this idea. Um, I knew that this concept was possible. Um, the Ultimate Frisbee community had already had something that was very similar, but on the men's side. So the Next Gen Tour happened in 2000. Uh, 10 or no, 2011, 2012, and 2013. Um, and I saw the success that that Next Gen Tour had. Um, it brought people out to games, it provided coverage of more male athletes, and it created these role models that we've seen have now gone on to win na college national championships, club national championships, to win the Callahan Award, and they in turn have been able to give back to their community, sort of use their experience to um, help shape the new generation of Ultimate Frisbee pay players. <clears throat> so I, I 
saw the Next Gen Tour um, as a great success in creating these role models, but I was looking on the female uh, side of Ultimate Frisbee, and yes, we do have a lot of excellent female role models, but we can do better. And I think that um, highlighting more female role models will help f sort of fill that void that we have. Um, Ultimate has generally been balanced in terms of coverage of uh, the women in Ultimate, so women's Ultimate and mixed Ultimate, and that's in large part due to USA Ultimate and the way that we choose to cover um, many of the, the divisions. Um, but that balance has changed a little bit in terms of the creation of two professional leagues. So now what we're seeing is a lot more media and coverage and video of men in Ultimate, and that women's side has not really grown at the same rate. Um, so I had this crazy idea of starting the All-Star Ultimate Tour, and I really wondered, um, would this succeed? There's no other data, um, and nothing has really been done like this before. Um, when I first started it, so I started a Kickstarter, um, looking to raise funds to make this uh, project possible, and I was terrified. I had no idea if this was gonna get funded and if it was gonna succeed in, in any regards. Um, but what I did notice is that the rate at which it was funded, which it was completely funded in, in two weeks, proved that people were eager, eager to support, and that there was a demand for Women's Ultimate. Um, <coughs> So the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of the, the logistics or how, how I was able to get people on board for this, this concept that, that was very new for a lot of people. Um, I, I was able to do this because I very much had one foot in the club, um, club division and then one foot still in the college. I just recently graduated from Tufts University, which is where Hannah is going to be going next year. Very exciting. Uh, <laughs> um, so I still had a lot of access to college ultimate players in the college scene, um, but had just begun to sort of form relationships with uh, club players because I had just played one season on the Boston women's team brute squad. Um, so this, having, having those two spheres, having access to those two spheres, um, made it very easy for me to try to bring them together. So um, <clears throat> that start, started in big part as partnerships with teams, being able to reach out to uh, club women's team and say, hey, this is my idea. What do you think? Would, would you be interested in having us come through your town and have a showcase game? And um, what kind of blossomed out of that was um, an opportunity for the club women's teams uh, to have this be a fundraiser for them. Um, and then they would also help sort of nail down a venue that was appropriate for the community and then provide volunteers to make the entire uh, game go successfully. Um, and then in terms of the college players, yes, I did have a pretty good knowledge of um, the players in the division, and I had a great time um, playing against many of, the, uh, many of the players in college, but a lot of them I'd actually never met before. So it, it was a lot of creating lists and then cold calling people and be like, hey, we, I've never met you before, but my name is Chena Titcom. Like, just give me two minutes. I've got a crazy idea. What do you think? Um, and then... One last thing to note about the All-Star Ultimate Tour is that uh, one of the key partnerships is Eric. Early recognition is critical. Um, for anyone here who knows Jim, without Jim and his support, um, we wouldn't have really the technology to show the amazing things that were happening on the field. And that was a big part of um, the All-Star Ultimate Tour is promoting women in Ultimate and showcasing female athletes. And in order to do that, um, having the technology the live streaming capabilities to do that. So, very key there. Um, the next thing I want to just touch upon is sort of a disclaimer. Um, I don't have the answers to anything. I just have my answers. Those answers are informed from, from my experiences um, and the, the experiences that I have, uh, have shaped how I view the challenges that women face. Um, and then I also do want to note that Ultimate is ahead of the game in many respects in terms of gender equity in sports. Um, the fact that we have a mixed division is uh, very different from many other sports. But that being said, said I would still like for us to, to push each other and for um, us as a community to work towards being better. Um, 
So the next thing that I would like to talk about is a goal that I have in terms of um, in terms of the All Star Ultimate Tour. So this goal is to expand how we as a society value athletes. Um, if we can expand how we view athletes to beyond just strength and speed, all of a sudden we can allow space to value not just men's sports, but women's and mixed sports too. Um, and there are, there are lots of ways in which we expand how we value athletes. Um, the way that I like to think about things is change in terms of depth and in terms of breadth. So depth is something that is uh, touching a small amount of people, perhaps, but creating a fundamental change or a deep change. Breadth is touch touching upon a lot of people and creating a smaller amount of change. In terms of depth, a good example is coaching, right? And then in terms of, a, of depth, it can be um, encouraging people to watch female games or women's games or mixed games. Um, and just trying to get more viewership to Ultimate in general. So I just want to touch upon two ways that I am a part of change, depth and breadth. I play on the women's club team, Seattle Riot, um, and we learned a little bit this morning about charters or core values. So I wanted to share with you some of the core values of my team. So we have three <coughs> headings, excellence, trust, and love. And within those three, we have a couple of, we like to expand upon those three, sub, those three headings. So we lead by example, we take pride in our contributions to the team, we act with discipline and intention. And then trust, we believe in each other, we are accountable to each other. And finally, love, we play for each other, we love the battle, and we invest in the ultimate community. These three headings are things that we cheer at every single practice and every single game. And throughout the season, we come back to these core values. And yes, they have been our core values for the last, I think, I believe three seasons, but they're constantly in, in motion and discussed. Are, are these still things that we want to value? Do we want to add things? Do we want to remove things? So it's still a, a living, breathing document um, and something that we, we want everybody to buy into. And so we create uh, opportunities for us to, to um, discuss them. Um, so I want to focus on one thing within each section when I think about the change in terms of depth that I would like to see and how we value athletes. Um, we take pride in our contributions to the team. If we can push players to become the best versions of themselves and acknowledge each person's contribution to the team, we're part of a system that has a growth mindset and pushes each person to be the best version of themselves. The second heading, trust, believing in each other's ability to grow. So when, when we are working, when each individual is working, we trust that every individual on the team is working and has the best intentions at heart. And then in that third heading, love, Perhaps the most important one at the bottom is we invest in the ultimate community. 29 out of the 31 players on our roster, that includes practice players, have coached or currently coach in Seattle. So a lot of our, our team is focused on giving back to the community. And some players can uh, have more opportunities to do so. So they coach a team th for an entire season. But right as a team, we also have a clinic that we do every year. We also run an elementary school league. So there are lots of opportunities for every player to coach whatever their abilities are. So then I would like to touch upon breadth in terms of change. So the All-Star Ultimate Tour had a, had a big focus on creating role models and creating more visibility of female athletes. This was said a couple times this morning, but you cannot be what you cannot see. Um, I think the All-Star Ultimate Tour also proved that there is value in women in Ultimate. There were paying butts in seats at games. People wanted to be there and paid to be there. In addition to all the online viewership um, through the live stream, 
and the uh, post-production, so being able to just watch those games whenever. Um, and more importantly, I think that uh, the All-Star Ultimate Tour is a, a reminder that there is worth in promoting women in Ultimate, and it's something that the Ultimate community wants, wants to do. Um, so I'd like to take some, some time, actually, for us to, to separate into groups of four or five, sort of depending on where you're sitting, um, and write down two ways in which you create change in terms of breadth and two ways in terms of depth. So this is kind of an opportunity for you to brag a little bit, but also learn from, from your group members. So you're going to take a couple minutes, write down those four things, then you're going to share it with your group. Then I'm going to bring us all back together, and I'm going to have you say one example from your, from your group that you hadn't thought of that you'd like to emulate or that you want to see more of so that we can kind of all work on this together. So t just take a couple minutes and write ways that you make change. Sorry. give too many people examples because so I definitely want people to think however, however they view as breadth or depth, right? It's big, it means completely different things for different people depending on how you interact with Ultimate, where you are in your life at this time, if you're a coach, if you're a parent, if you're a player. There's just so much variation. Yeah, definitely not scripted. Can I, so, can I listen in? Hi, <laughs> but I want to introduce myself. Dave Thompson yeah, um, oh. is a really, yeah, an old, old friend of mine. Oh, I just so nice saw, he was just in the Bay Area and he was just talking about you guys. Wow, okay, um, so nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Sheena. Darcy. Darcy, yes. okay. Darcy Ellsworth, yeah. He and I lived in Spain together in the 80s. Oh, wow. And he, he just recently, yeah, go on. Sorry, okay. I'm, when you were talking, I was like, wait a minute, that's a tickle. <laughs> and I'm wearing five. I see that. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> well, I don't want to... Well, we're just, we're, we're just trying to uh, talk a little bit more about depth and what that looks like and what that might feel like. Um, so. You mean working on maybe a more, doing more work in a concentrated area? Maybe you want to, on a, on a, it could be a team? Yeah. Or as trying to spread out to multiple I mean, environments? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to give too many examples because yeah. it really means it looks so different for every yeah. person. If you're a parent, if you're a coach, if you're a player, you know, if you have a full-time job, if you can, right. you know, coach 
every single day, you know, so it just looks different. Okay, I'll give you two examples, just because in San Diego where, where I am, we were really trying to work on uh, developing a, a team at high school, and I think a big focus for me was investing a lot of time trying to, with, with clinics, getting the kids, obviously, to love it, and then they took it, they took it on and said, hey, we'd like to get a team together, and so we put a lot of effort trying to get find a coach, trying to see what the teams were, what kids were interested in the team to kind of try to build it. So that was a lot of concentration to get a team off the ground because we only have you know about half a dozen. It was like really exciting. So I put a lot of effort into that, which is still a little bit struggling. And then the breadth is just all the clinics through our organization in San Diego trying to get as many schools as possible to grow you. And I guess that would be my example. Oh, really nothing. I'm not kind of you're this learning. Huh? This is your first kind of foray. Yeah, this is my first, yeah. And yeah, this of, is... Well, and comparing to other, other sports, you know, that's mm -hmm. why I'm a high school athlete. Yeah. They're playing traditional sports, it's sort of like soccer, or how that how they're they're infiltrated. I mean, they it started out from first grade, yeah. they're like, it's they've got their leagues, it's a, and there's a lot of competition yeah. between sports, even, you know, soccer versus basketball, and who's going to get the players, they watch all that, and it's yeah. very, yeah. Real different. Real Very overcoached. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this is this is your depth right here, right? Like you were trying to change yourself, right? You're trying to create deep change so that you can better yeah, and affect change. Yeah. yeah. So you might use some of the examples right there for some of the words of vice versa. You know? Yeah. Um, so. I just, my, we have a brand new team at our school, and, um, and it's kind of, kind of, it's, it's middle, it's, well, it's actually K through eight, but the team that I coach is mostly seventh, seventh and eighth graders, um, and my daughters are in sixth grade, so they're also on it, I make them, um, and so it's a small, kind of intimate group, but they're really, the, the boys that are into it are really into it, you know, so they will just eat up anything that I throw out them, at them, if I say, oh, there's this league, or this is pickup game, or this scrimmage, or this term, they're like, yeah, Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, it's still not recognized officially by our school. Um, but I think that those boys, I mean, like, I, I got a little bit clamped when I at, when I took them to their first tournament thinking, like, they're going to remember this. You know, a good number of these kids are going to go on. They're going to play in high school. They're going to play in college. They're going to play as adults. And they're going to remember their first tournament. And it's not a lot of kids, but it's a small number. I think that they are really passionate about it. That's what feels really good. That's amazing that you can get them to come out. And you know, that their parents are taking them to different yeah. opportunities. That's our struggle: mm -hmm. is getting the parents on board. Yeah, that they want to drive them to these things. That's, that's I think the biggest thing: overcoming that barrier that people are just not familiar with. Right. Yeah. So you're not only trying to get the kids excited, you're trying to get the parents excited about the sport. Right. right. Well, I think that we, you know, we. I'm gonna bop around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so the, the county where we live is like super affluent. Um, yeah. Can I listen in? Great. to help run clinics. Mm -hmm. 
what? So we've done boys and girls club clinics. We've got a girls being Well, we've got a invited to go to the girls and have a meeting with our parents today. When I contacted her and said, we can just do it all together. So we're going to do it in April. We'll see how we get that masculine. To do it, but I mean, I, I have to really like, look into how to do it. I feel like I'm trying to do it all on my own. I mean, I'm so that doesn't really, I didn't get no, no, that's that's great though. Like definitely breadth in terms of clinics. Like that's exactly touching a lot of people. And I think from from this clinic to the or this conference today, I'm realizing that's a really good step because I'm hitting those low income. The, the kids at the boys and girls club and the kids at the girls and men are not the athletic ones that have their other sports. They're not in the soccer. They might be not like this. And so that's actually a much better place for me to do this. It's all kids that I've had. And they love it. Really. Especially like that drill you pack it and two people go do it. <laughs> kids love that one. It's they love it. It's how much they love it. They just want to keep doing it. That's true, too. <laughs> so that's kind of all I want to say. I have one that kind of covers both depth and breadth. Um, I work for Disney Plus, and so we, due to sign off, we have an auction every fall to raise money for youth development funds. So that provides financial aid and coaching stipends and helps with clinics and all that kind of stuff. So that's more of a threat. But then in terms of depth, like we just had our YCC trials last, last week and this week. What happened to people? And like, I personally like went out to kids because we have kids who like, their families don't have computers and, or their families don't really speak English but they want to try out the really amazing players too and so like Jude and I would like go out and seek out these kids and be like hey you have enough to find that way like you know that you know you should do this and they'd like sit down with them and they like, want to do it and then, then at the end of tryouts like these kids are like coming up to me and giving me like can I hug you Thank you so much for like having my back. Like, this means so much to me. And those are the kids who are like, let me help you carry stuff to your car and like let me help you like all the phones and the So I feel like it's yeah. kind of cool. Um, and then just be like looking for what guys have done. And like, uh, like you were saying, talking about why you love this book so much and what it is. Nice. I'm going to keep bopping around, but this was good. I like hearing what everybody had to say. I Two minutes? Do you want to say two minutes? <laughs> okay, guys, you have 29 seconds. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I just told him two minutes. <laughs> I want you to be a I also want you to be a I can't push it. 
just accepting anybody. It's rough to get their butt kicked, but RJD, you had a piece right before that, they went over. So they were in that exact position. They were the team that went over for and got smoked by Miami. They weren't in the game. And they came to like, it's all around. But the best thing about it was they're digging in the sand. So they're playing in the beaches. I'm playing both of them. It's like we're in the middle of a game. Yeah. yeah. I know, but I know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Until, like I said, I mean, I call it Coach Weiss. Yeah. Which we got to be a friend of Weiss. Yeah, I told her they beat our butts. But it was, that was okay, you broke your hand for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, they still beat us by a lot. What do you Yeah. Yeah. Just have people. Okay. Who is ready? Who is ready to share one? <laughs> uh, I'm from Minnesota. My name is Jake. Uh, and one of the things, and I'm, I apologize, I don't know if it's death or breath, uh, but one of the things that we learned about last year that we really want to take advantage of this year is getting the, the kind of conglomerate club teams to the high school regional uh, tournaments where they don't have to necessarily be representing their high school team, but we can take the girls that are on uh, open teams and give them a single gender playing experience. Uh, is that depth or breadth? That, I would guess that would be depth, so you're okay. giving them a lot of opportunities to grow. Yeah. So let's do, let's do popcorn style, kind of, and try to keep it short and to the point. We want to be able to hear from as many people as possible. <laughs> Um, I just heard in this group two teachers who work in low-income schools, and um, it just really touched me how uh, Joe and Julia, Julia <laughs> um, bring that sense of community and um, respect to their schools as teachers. So I think that's good. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, so I quite don't remember what we said, but um, <laughs> no, I talked to it. Um, so I felt I feel like I'm. Uh, so we uh, I come from the Central Valley, uh, where it's out in like Stockton uh, area. So when you enjoy your almonds, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> uh, but we use a lot of um, I don't know. I don't know, like with her, uh, the all-star tour, um, we use uh, women's games uh, to, uh, as examples for both of our genders. Uh, we our, I would say we have 30 players and we have six girls, um, but mo a majority of the videos that, we, uh, I, that I give to the kids uh, are female games. And the reason is, is that they can enjoy uh, multi-gender uh, multi uh, sports. Uh, single gender sports, it's all, uh, that, and it's just inclusive, and I kind of want to keep uh, pushing as a community out there uh, that um, there is no right or wrong answer, and uh, that um, just enjoying the sport itself uh, is the best uh, aspect, and I have realized that a lot of our boys, when uh, watching the videos and we discuss afterwards, there's no talk of, uh, of like, man, that was a great play for a girl. Uh, like, man, that was a great game, or that was a great play, or wow, what a layout. But there's never uh, a talk, uh, usually ever, uh, about the, uh, the gender of the player itself. Chase shared an example of something he used to do in college, which was a 25-hour throw-a-thon. Uh, so we would post up at their college campus and throw for 25 hours straight, different people rotating through. I think that's awesome. I've never heard of anything like that. And drinking the whole time? Uh, well, that was the off-campus version. 
I just want to elaborate on that a little bit further. One of the things, it was in the, specifically in the dorm quad in, in front of the cafeteria. So it guaranteed that no one could go through our university without knowing about the Ultimate Frisbee team. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, so our group had multiple college coaches. So we primarily talked about depth and kind of creating, especially within your college um, culture, like a sense of family. And we both commented on girls that had played for us for only one season and how even though they only played one season of College Ultimate, that potentially they can still go out and kind of become, we were talking about becoming the breadth, and those people can bring um, Ultimate to a greater audience, even though you may have thought, oh, it was only one season, so it might not have been as depth-wise as we thought, they can end up doing something later. And I commented that one girl had played only one year on the B team, and she contacted me this year, and she is starting a brand new boys team at a high school nearby. And she's someone I would have assumed was not playing or involved in any way since I hadn't heard from her in five years. So I think that that's incredible that something that you do and you invest in, and that'll help the sport. And I think that's very unique about Ultimate right now is you have that opportunity to create change. <laughs> um, yeah, so one idea, um, Val mentioned this, that I really liked was that um, when you're trying to promote Ultimate to uh, new groups or especially schools, phrasing Ultimate as a social and emotional learning, not just, you know, this sport or, you know, learning this new activity, but that it adds something to the kids that you're teaching it to. Um, well, again, my, my name is Ben. I'm here on behalf of Ultimate Peace. I work for them actually on their year-round program in the Middle East. And um, I'm thrilled to share something we're doing for some breath actually is bringing a couple of dozen uh, young leaders from the Middle East to the U.S. for a friendship tour that is meant to share both Ultimate from around the world, but also um, some of the values and some of the lessons we're learning about peace building, conflict resolution, and multicultural um, experiences with audiences. We happen to be going to Colorado and Colorado Springs to see um, USA Ultimate and some of the young players there, but also DC. Um, and so it's, I guess, awesome. Thank you for letting me uh, speak about that and be here. Uh, I'm Mike from Bay Area Disc Association, um, but I'd like to talk about what Triangle Ultimate is doing for their coaches. They're doing seminars every month uh, free, so that is not only developing the coaches' professional skills, but also giving them a chance to connect with each other and network and create a cohesive group that can bring the whole sport forward in that area. So one thing the Bay Area is doing is a family frisbee fest. So taking the ultimate community out into the non-ultimate community to introduce the sport and to develop that community and spread the breath. Um, we, uh, I think that the biggest thing that I came away from, with was Francisco was mentioning that he's here and taking this not only to his own family and to his daughter's school, but also spreading the word of, of the kind of discussions and the development ideas that he's learning here and uh, talking to his friends back in, Mex back in Mexico who are trying to develop youth and youth ultimate opportunities and adult yep. ultimate opportunities. So I thought that was, that's really breadth. That's really good out there. That's awesome. Nobody else have anything? Should I? Oh, yeah, let's get one more. Um, mine's just the depth one from our group. Um, that when I was captaining at Purdue, it was back when we didn't have a lot of video, um, even in general for Ultimate, um, and specifically game video. So I just got a cheap little camera and started, if I had an injured person that could be the videographer, that was great. Otherwise, I was on a tripod, just in a corner of the end zone and see what we got. And then we would just look at game footage and that was how we learned and looking at, you know, what your teammates could do, picking out the good things they did and being able to relate that and go, if my teammate can do that, I can learn to do that. Um, 
and then a highlight reel at the end, even though, you know, it's not like we were that great, but it was fun to celebrate your teammates at the end, too. Yeah, absolutely. Great, so I wanted to give an opportunity, so coming back sort of more to uh, talking about um, the All-Star Ultimate Tour, I wanted to give an opportunity for people to ask questions or to give feedback or to provide suggestions. So, hey, Chena, have you ever considered doing the All-Star Tour on motorcycles? Yes, we did. We decided no. <laughs> um, or I don't know. So it's an opportunity to, to ask me questions, but also to provide feedback or suggestions. So, Are you going to do another one? I'm not sure yet. I don't know what the, the future of the All-Star Ultimate Tour is, but I, I hope that it will continue. Oh, Valeria's got a new point. Okay. <laughs> Was it a deliberate choice to play club teams versus college teams? And did you uh, have discussions about the pros and cons of college versus club? Um, the All Star Ultimate Tour was definitely shaped in part by logistics. Um, in order to get college, if, in order to play against college teams, they would have to be probably the, the best college teams. If you're taking the <coughs> players from the rest of the college teams, does that make sense? So it it wouldn't quite work to take all the best players from the division and then try to get them to compete about against the college division without their best players. Does that make sense? Um, and then we also just tried to focus on cities where there were established programs so that um, you know there was a community that would come out and watch and support um, in addition to keeping, mi keeping in mind just um, the, the level of the program. So we definitely had teams that were, you know, Riot, which was a previous world champions, um, and then some uh, uh, less developed programs. So having a variety. Uh, did you guys do clinics uh, throughout your tour? And if not, would you be willing to do them uh, on the next tour? Oof, I figured this is going to be tough. Um, we did not do clinics before the games. Um, I did actually touch base with Kevin Minderhout, who ran the Next Gen Tour, um, and he mentioned that throughout his iterations, he did add clinics. Um, again, the biggest challenge that I'm facing in terms of clinics and getting getting the all-star player all-star ultimate tour players and getting the local club players to work together and you know have a clinic um, is is field space and time so that's kind of what we've talked about before but a lot of the venues that we played at I only I can only get access to that venue like three hours before the game and it's really hard to set up the game have the players warm up and then do a clinic before playing a game so I'm, I'm struggling with that. Um, I'm definitely open to it. And if you have any suggestions or any ways that you think it could work, like, please come and talk to me. I would love to figure it out. Uh, hi. I was wondering um, if you thought about sharing your learnings um, either through blogs or, um, I don't know, some other way, um, sharing your learnings with other women's ultimate teams and other local disc organizations who are interested in having showcase games and trying to get as many people out to watch Women's Ultimate as possible. Um, because I think your, your initiative was kind of a precursor to, um, you know, could be a precursor to pro Women's Ultimate. I think there are a lot of learnings that, that could be shared and, and very useful. So, sorry, to clarify, your question is, whether or not there's a forum to sort of discuss what the next steps might be? Yeah, and do you have a plan? Do I have to, a plan? To share your learnings. Um, I, I don't have a plan, no. Um, <laughs> this is all very experimental. I've done it one year, um, so I'm not quite sure. Um, I think that what I have learned in one year has been invaluable, and I have been part of discussions all over the country about a women's professional league um, and about wanting to bring more visibility to women in Ultimate. So women in Ultimate includes mixed Ultimate as well, not just women's Ultimate. Um, and I think that that in itself is, those, those discussions were not happening a year ago. And they were not, uh, there was no data a year ago to figure out if it was even possible. Um, so it's very much a, a process is what I would say. 
Um, first off, thank you for doing all star for it. Um, as a player and a fan, it was a lot of fun. And as a coach, um, my girls watched games this fall as a coaching pool with like prompts and questions, and it was a lot of fun to watch them get excited about it as well. Um, my question for you is more as a fan of what was kind of your favorite moment of the tour? Like what really stood out to you? Oof, okay. Um... When I think about the All-Star Ultimate Tour, I think about it in <clears throat> sort of two different ways. One is sort of my organizing organizing hat, and then the second hat is my, my player hat. So in terms of the organizing hat, I think the <clears throat> my biggest highlight was um, our very first game. So before we played Seattle Riot in Seattle, um, in the shadow of the Space Needle, uh, there was the Riot Elementary School League, so there was 150 kids playing on five, you know, smaller fields just right before our game. And it was, per it was a perfect um, union of getting, getting the young players out there already um, and making it easy for them to stay and watch the game. Because there were riot coaches coaching that league, and it wasn't going to work for them to be coaching a league that was originally, uh, you know, 45 minutes away. So it enabled the entire community to come together and for those parents to pick up their kids and then stay, watch the game. Um, so term, from that, that perspective, that was a, a big highlight. And then I have to say, from a player's perspective, um, the very last game that the All-Star Ultimate Tour played against Boston, against Brute Squad, was probably one of the, I mean, I'm biased because I was playing, but um, probably one of the best women's ultimate games that I've seen played in a lot of years, save to maybe um, the women's U.S. national team finals in, in Sakai, Japan from 2012, which was also an incredible game. Um, and sort of just to feel the, the shift in momentum. One team was up, then another team was up, and it just showed that the crowd can get invested into a game and can love <coughs> being part of that energy, and that's irrespective of gender. And that was a beautiful moment for me. Oh, I have a question. Yeah, great. Um, so what do you think about, and you are related with the pro leagues that oh. just showcase the, the men ultimately? And because you really show that, I mean, that was a great product, great product, but very entertaining, mm -hmm. um, very exciting and fun to watch. Challenging question. Thank you for asking. No, thank you. That's, that's a, it's, a, it's a challenging place to be. I think my answer is going to be coming back to my first uh, discussion about values and something that... Uh, allowed me to put on the All-Star Ultimate Tour was being part of a team and working with my siblings. Um, and so a big part of um, buying into this concept of uh, the Men's Professional League, specifically in Seattle, um, was a concerted effort from my siblings and I to be part of the Seattle Ultimate Community. And I think that uh, the, professional, the professional leagues are happening. They've happened for the last three, four years. Um, and I think that if we can be a positive force and help shape it, shape it into, into what we want to see it become, um, I think being part of that conversation is absolutely necessary. Well, thank you so much.